Hey everybody, welcome into Rock Painting 101 where we give you fun new rock painting ideas that anybody can create. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you do, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get painting. Hello, hello, I see everybody popping in. Feel free to say hi where you're watching from. I'm getting my screen pulled up here so I've left, I like to see the comments over here so we are going to do a rock for 2022 and i will apologize still a little froggy but i feel fantastic for those of you guys i've had a lot of people reach out and leave me wonderful messages i am doing well everybody's healthy um and so i'm glad to be back uh this will probably be my last live of the year so it's great to be kind of signing off with a 2022 rock my kids will be on christmas break starting next week and so i probably won't be online we'll be pretty busy uh, with the holidays so i think you all know how that goes we are going to do um one of our broken rock styles i have a small version here i can't fit them both in the screen because i'm nice and close today so we're gonna do the broken rock 2022 so i'm not sure how we made it this far already 2022 i feel like we just got <laughs> we're getting into 2020 um it's the longest fastest years ever right so we're gonna go ahead and get started here hello betty in fort lauderdale um trying to keep an eye on that while uh while we are going here so this is a rougher rock this design actually is one of those that you can definitely do on a bumpier stone it will help create these kind of cracks um and the broken look better grab a little piece of doodle paper since i'm talking with my pen open here i might need to make sure it's flowing so i'm gonna start along the outside edge where i'm gonna have it broken and we're just going to create the outer edge of our broken look so you can just let it kind of bump along you don't have to have a super solid line i try not to have many curves more kind of straight edges and just kind of let the rock bump you along like this and you can do as much of the surface of your rock as you want you just want to have at least enough space that will have some shading and then it will say you know 2022 on it as well so you want enough room that you'll be able to create your lettering and just kind of go along here there's no rhyme or reason to this part just kind of let the rock move your pen along is what I like to kind of say. Um, chasing another, you guys, I get these little gnats from my plants. They're driving me nuts still. Okay, so once you've got your outside edge, we're gonna go ahead and fill this in with our gold first in case we want a second layer and also so that gives the gold plenty of time to dry. I am using a gold out of the Deco Art Metallic Pack. I've had it for a while, obviously it's really messy, but the glorious gold, okay? So use whatever gold you have. If you have gold paint pens, you can use gold paint pens for this as well. And we're just gonna fill in the center of this. And we're gonna get pretty close to the edges, but we're gonna fill in in the extreme points with darkness anyways, so you don't have to worry about it too much um, getting all the way up against your black. So it's pretty forgiving design here. Uh, the main thing is you just want to have a nice coverage. Now, I always err on the side of a thin coat. A lot of people, when they want their color to seem, you know, not translucent, they get this nice thick coat on here and paint doesn't like that. It takes longer to dry. Um, so I tend to go on and put it on nice and thin. And if you do a thin first layer, it dries really pretty quick if you're directly on your rock because it kind of soaks in a little bit of that wet. So by the time that I fill in this design, this first side, if it's nice and thin, will probably be dry already by the time I get to the other end. I'm going to go along the edge with this smaller brush, but this one's this rock's a little bigger than the first one I did, so I'll probably grab a bigger brush to fill in the center so that you're not watching me fill this in forever. And again, just close to that black, we're gonna reline that area anyways at the end as well. So if you do get on your black, that's fine. 
Just don't want to get on the stone on the other side of the black or you'll have to stretch your outline out a little bit, which also is fine. Like I said, this is kind of a forgiving design and I've done a couple of these broken rocks. So if you followed the page for a while, you've probably seen me do one. Um, every time I do a new design, I get, oops, sorry, just bonked you with my paintbrush. I do get new questions and new problems that people um, have with creating the design. So I feel like every time I do a new tutorial on one of these broken rocks, I have some new tips for you but I will try to kind of touch base on anything that I have mentioned in the previous videos for those that are catching one of these broken rocks for the first time. But they're really pretty easy to do. We do our shadowing with our black paint pen and some a little bit of moisture, not a lot, on our paintbrush. So it's kind of a hack for shadows or shading. Um, it makes it pretty easy for our beginners. You can obviously do this with regular black acrylic paint and a really fine liner style paintbrush and a very steady hand if you can do line work like that. I'm not great at it and I don't really try that hard to be great at it to be honest because I have my black paint pens and they do the job and I'm just, I think I'm a doodler at heart, like that's my you know, art style, I guess you could say. So I don't have a problem using the paint pens. All right, I got a bigger brush here so we can fill in the center of this quickly. And I'm doing gold. I love gold for New Year's stuff. Um, gold and black together, but you can do these in any color you like. See, and now this is already dry over here so I can come across it with second coat probably could have done the whole thing with this big brush not too tight of there he is all right and i can come back in here with another coat too in the center so i'm going to kind of brush off extra here got more paint on my brush than i thought i did I did not put that in water. Oops, excuse me. Um, I got my angle nice and close here for you, but I'm going to hit you with my paintbrush from time to time. Um, I just wiped it off on just like a little towel, the excess paint, just so that I can pull that extra paint up. I'd rather come back with a second layer than have it on there super thick. It'll make it easier to work with it here in a little bit. So we'll rinse out that big brush so that doesn't dry on. And we're going to start working on our edges a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is take and create kind of the, the cracks that end up going out. And for those of you that are joining in, we're working on a broken rock design here, okay? I just, I'm really close, so it's high, kind of hard here because I can sneak it way up here so people can kind of see. How about that? When they're coming in, I know the amount of people in the room is kind of covering it on my screen, but at least you have a little bit of an idea of what you're tuning into right now. So we're going to start along the edges and anywhere where it comes to a point is kind of where I, I start off and we're going to create kind of like a, the cracked rock effect. So you can pull out and lift away or start really lift it up and slowly bring down pressure and come in. It's kind of a preference thing, um, and I'll kind of go back and forth sometimes too, so I don't like to say that there's a rule of exactly how you have to do it. Um, and again, let the kind of the shape and the bumping of the rock guide your paint pen in. So you can create V shapes, Y shapes, single line areas. So what I like to do is just kind of follow along my outline again, and with the bumping of the rock is where I kind of will let it kind of trail off in certain directions from time to time okay and we can touch up certain areas as we um, work on this stone and add more I like to err on the side of coming back and adding extra lines later and not overdoing the cracks coming off we can always add more you can't take them off once you've created them so just 
be careful with that not to overdo it i know a lot of people that's a problem that they have when they do these designs that they they think oh my gosh i did too many so again you can always do more um, but you can't take them back off uh, now the area where it's coming off you can kind of darken that we're going to come in with a shadow in that area too um, but again really light touch with your paint pen kind of let it bounce along those natural little bumps in the stone it will give you a much more natural kind of crack look you don't want these straight lines coming off of your rock everywhere so again just kind of follow along your edge kind of create more pointies like tips they don't all have to be these giant cracks some of them can just be an extra little bump out okay so there's like i said not any have to's must do's on these uh just let that rock kind of show you where where it wants those extra cracks to be and work your way all the way around so i'm trying to make sure i'm keeping careful when you're grabbing your rock not to put your finger right in a crack that's wet I'm trying to make sure i'm keeping you guys on the screen here I'm really close to my phone today I thought when we get in here and start doing these shadows, I wanted you guys to get a really close up look of how we do that because it really makes it pop. All right, now again, you can always add more. I'm gonna stick with what I've got here. This one seems like it, it needs something. Kind of when you look at it from overhead, kind of the further out they go, the thicker I try to make the area coming from the center, kind of thicken up that spot where it cracks. Look at that pretty shimmer, love the gold. All right, so we've got to add this second coat of gold on here. Um, I'm going to do it nice and thin so that we can keep working. It won't take very long to dry. Again, you do not have to get the gold all the way out into these point areas because we're going to add that shadow and that shading in those. So you're not going to see that spot anyways. Okay, so don't worry about that. We just want to make sure that our, our base coat here in the center is nice and shiny and shimmery here. So... Again, that's why we did a nice thin coat. We can come right back in. That first coat is totally dry. And we're gonna do a really thin coat here again. It will dry pretty quick. We're not gonna go all the way out into those edges for the sake of this live. If you're doing it at home, go ahead, get out in those edges, give yourself a little bit of a break. I'm just gonna kind of feather it out there just a smidge. Ever so lightly, so super light little coat there, but just Takes away the transparency a little bit. Okay, so get this brush rinsed out. And you guys are gonna have to bear with me because I don't want to have any gold in my water for the next stuff. And we have to dry anyway, so I'm gonna go dump my water real quick. start our shading here okay so again I, I am using my extra fine tip this is the artistro one the extra fine tip that I used for the lining on the outside and this is what I'm going to use to create the shadows on the inside of my rock as well and this is also something that you have to be a little bit patient with when you are creating these shadows um, at first the moisture level on your brush might be too much because we're going to dunk it in water just to kind of get it a little bit wet um, so you just work back and forth on this i think some people try to just do it all at once and a lot of painting is layering to create your depth and 
layering to get that look that you like. Don't expect to go around at one time and have this perfect shadow. You're going to kind of build up that value because you want it to have a nice fade. You don't want it to be this harsh shadow line all the way around your stone. And it's easy to do. It's not hard to do. It's just something that you have to just take your time with and give yourself some grace with it. And just like um, when I was talking about doing the lines, build it up, okay? Don't have to put it on super thick right at the beginning. It's better to go back and add another layer of a shadow than have it be too thick of a layer, if that makes sense. So we're gonna work slowly around this rock. I'm gonna do the whole thing live. It will probably be a little bit long. Um, so uh, bear with me. I'll come back and share a shortened version like I always do later. Um, but it's it's really a fun process. And like I said, I've done lots of designs like this. This is obviously a New Year's Eve rock. I'm rambling because I'm letting it dry. I, um, this is a New Year's Eve style for this, but we've done this as a broken heart shaped rock with pink coming out. Um, we've done it with like a, a word rock it said be the light and it was a really bright color coming out of the rock we've done it with a rainbow breaking out of a rock so there's so many ways that you can use this technique um, beyond this new year's design but just once you see how we do this shadowing on here um, you can just let your imagination run with what's actually coming out of your rock just whatever your design is if it's going to go out to the edges make sure you have um, the design down first before you go in and do this shading. I'm not worried about this design going on after the shading because none of it is different than just black. Um, so it, it can go right into the shadows. A black shadow on top of that design isn't going to change the look of it. So, all right, I think we're good enough here. So we're going to start deep in this corner here. Move this guy. He's not going to be able to stay in the whole time. So we're gonna start deep in this corner here and we're just gonna dab on just a little bit of our paint pen. We're just gonna lay the paint right there. Now, again, I'm gonna put my brush in my water and then I'm literally gonna wipe off most of the water, if you can see, on a towel, okay? I don't want it dripping wet. And I'm just gonna come right in here and I'm gonna wiggle to get that paint onto my brush and then I'm gonna pull it along the edges and then start kind of pulling out and away a little bit. And if it's going on too dark, just keep kind of wiggling to pull up a little bit more paint, okay? See that? So if your brush is too wet, which I think sometimes people do, it will water down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and dab my brush in the water just to make it a little wetter. It will water it down too much and you see, you know, what will happen is it just will become kind of a wet mess and you won't get that dark value. See, it just becomes kind of a little bit too wet. All right, so if that happens and you feel like you're just pulling the paint around, it's not really staying dark in your corner, just go ahead and move that shadow paint because you are leaving behind a little bit of a shadow. Just work it along the edge to get it off your brush and to let your brush dry out a little bit, okay? And then we're just gonna go right back in. Now I've got, I'm leaving my paint pen open, so keep a doodle sheet so that you can make sure it's flowing because it might start to dry out on the tip a little bit. And then as your brush dries, See, again, we're just wiggling into that paint and moving it along the edge. And you just work these small areas at a time. Just kind of pull it until it kind of starts to fade more than you like. And then you'll come back in and add another little dot of paint. And I really like to have the... the points get really kind of dark you want that dark to really get in there in those areas now see here i'm getting a little harsh so i'm gonna get i literally have i'm gonna come in here like a drop of paint on the edge and i'm literally just tapping my brush in that dot of paint i don't want a bunch of water on my brush but then we can kind of come along that edge and just kind of wiggle 
that we don't have such a harsh line. And if you're not loving the area, or you feel like you're moving the paint too much, just keep moving on, come back around to it. Okay, so we're just gonna keep working our way around our rock. I'm literally just tracing that edge, the edge of my um, outline. And every once in a while, you might put your brush down there, and at first it doesn't seem like it's moving. If you just kind of keep wiggling it in there, you can kind of loosen it up without adding more water to your brush because you just you don't want it to be super wet all the time. Every time you get your brush wet, you kind of have to get most of the moisture back out. I like the angle of this, but I am bonking you guys more. <laughs> I feel like you can really see really good what I'm doing here. So I apologize for the occasional bumpy ride, but I feel like you can see what I'm doing. See, I'm totally dry here now, so I do have to get just one little dot of water so that I can move it around. So yes, it is a little bit of trial and error is something that you do have to kind of work at a little bit, but I, I promise if you just kind of keep with it, and again, go on the air on the side of less shadow first. Once you make your way all the way around your rock, you can come back and add more. See, like when I'm a little bit too wet here, see how I, I can kind of see the difference between my shadow and my line. But that's okay, because that shadow looks really nice, and so I can come back and darken up the area closer to the line later. I'm not worried about that. That's easy enough to do. It's that shadow that we're working on anyways. So I'm just gonna continue that wetness around my edge and then I'll come back and add in the darkness. Ah, jeez, you guys. Is it worth the bumps to get the better angle? I can't tell. I, I don't know how long it kind of keeps moving on you. It got a little wet on the outside here. I must have dripped some point in time. All right, we're almost all the way around for the first lap here. And it's looking pretty good. It'll be, I usually do two laps. The first lap around just to kind of lay out the color and then the second lap around to kind of touch up and fade it a little bit better in areas that I am not super satisfied with. This area I know I'm going to have to come back to, but it's too wet right now. I dripped a whole drop of water on there. So if I see, see how I still seem a little too wet here? If you just wipe on your piece of paper to get some of that, that paper will pull out a little bit of your moisture too. Like if you're just going down and it seems like you're just pulling everything back up, then you're just too wet of a brush. Okay. All right. Oh, I missed a spot down here. Just jumped right over that whole area the first lap, it looks like. Okay. All right. So now we just get to start working our way around kind of for lap two. And anywhere you feel it just needs a little more darkness um, or 
even if it needs a little bit more of a fade to it um, you just kind of work your way around and again you can build up these layers and values um, going around two times is the minimum that you should probably be doing on this design um, it I'm just gonna keep working my way around here in certain areas Kind of add that shadow a little further out and on the outside edges sometimes. And I'm wiping off most of that and just kind of pulling that shadow out just a little bit, just kind of working in little circles there. Okay, so this area here is where I feel like we got that shadow in there, but the edge, I can see the difference between my shadow and my edge too much here. We're just gonna go and a little bit more. It's a little wet over here. Sorry. I'm excited. I'll come back through and read the comments to see. Is it worth being close, even though we're bumping a little bit? But see, okay, see that side? That looks so good. At the top there. Okay, and then you can also check, like when you're doing this, you know, for any areas, like see right here, my crack does, it doesn't come to a fine enough point for me. I like them to kind of taper off a little bit better than that. So you can always come back through and kind of add these little veins a little bit to, to areas where you think it might just need just a little something else, okay? So we're getting pretty close this area here I mean it's a pretty straight line so I guess the shadow probably wouldn't be too harsh there this over here I need it, darkness in these tips see how they're not very dark out in the tip I like those areas to be nice and dark so I'm gonna fill those areas and then I think we'll probably move on just to finish up the design here and like I said let it dry in between work at it walk away from it even if you need to to kind of let you see and with this design I can always come back and work in the shadows after you've got the center done too like if you if you do your center design and you want to add more shadows you can All right, I'm gonna let this be for now because I, I do like it. Uh, I might have to make some adjustments once I can kind of get my nose in there. <laughs> my camera is obviously right above me here, so I can't quite get all the way in there. Sometimes it's hard to get way in there when you have a phone hovering over the rock you're painting. So just gonna kind of that area it seemed like it needed a little bit more darkness okay all right we're gonna move on all right rinse out your brush just that little bit of black is still paint so make sure you get that off the brush 
All right. So just we're just gonna do some fun numbers here really quick and we'll be done. So I like this lettering style. It's very easy to replicate for people that just wanna have something a little bit more than just a basic straight line numbers. So I'm not making them perfectly straight. I think it's fun to have them kind of tilted and a little bit playful. So we're just gonna go on here and write the numbers out normal first. Be very careful on your bumpy rock. Just kind of write slowly so you don't splatter um, on your stone. But you can kind of, with these tilted style letters, kind of move around a little bit too to avoid any really big divots on your stone. I've got a pretty big line here, so if you know you're gonna hit it no matter what, just keep it in mind so when you get to that spot, you just, the lightest touch possible, kind of skip over it a little bit. And then you can always come back and fill those spots. Okay, so for these numbers, we're just gonna add um, a line perpendicular at anywhere the numbers end. First, and then for our zero, we are going to pick our start finish spot on there. I like to do it towards the top. Um, so just create a line anywhere you want on that. You could leave them just like that. They kind of look like pirate numbers, but we aren't. Uh, we're just gonna make it thick towards these lines. So on the twos, we're basically gonna come from that point to that intersecting point and fill in like that. This one got a little bit of a curve to it, which is fine. Since they're not all lined up perfectly level, you can be a little more playful with them not matching 100%. That's the one hard thing about 2022 is we've got three twos all next to each other so don't with this lettering style you don't have to worry about them all being perfectly even so now on the curve we're gonna slowly get closer to our center line as well so i'm gonna swoop out and then towards that line just like that and then that's gonna be our two really simple oh my gosh i'm so sorry you guys maybe next time a little bit further away would work better i can't move you in the middle of a video that would really make you seasick i've done it a couple of times but okay almost done here and then for our zero you're just going to take from wherever you create this, you can go to the left or to the right, but you're going to create uh, the thick edge just going into your zero. And I've got a really lumpy, bumpy spot there, so I'm going to be very careful. And All right, now I added some little like confetti dots to this one, and these are so simple to do. I'm literally creating a square with scooped in edges, and I'm gonna draw one really big on this paper so you can see it. So I'm scooping in like this to create a square. And when you do it smaller, you basically fill it in. So that's what I'm doing here, so. You just create these tiny little scooped edges and it basically fills itself in when you're doing it. And they just look like these little confetti pieces. It just adds a little bit more design to your rock, fills in some of the negative space a little bit. They're just kind of cute. You could do dots too, but I feel like this kind of matches the lettering a little bit better. You can get these out towards the edge. Like I said, since they're black, it's okay if they go into the shadow. The shadow kind of just melts into them anyways. Okay. We need a couple up in the lettering. Numbering. Numbering. 
All right, guys. So now that I'm peeking at it, you guys, I, I probably will. Let's see, I've got an area here already. So I'm going to show you what I look for once I can kind of get my nose right up in here. Anywhere, see how you could almost see the difference between the line and the shadow there. You see that? That's what I look for. I want it to fade. This is a great example of what I'm looking for. You want it to fade from that harsh black into the gold all the way consistently. And see here how the difference? So this left side, I want to go back in and fix that shadow. So we're just gonna, again, it's all about the layering. The, the start of it and the finish it or where we want it to be, we just gotta kind of get that them to marry together here in the center. So we're just gonna go right back in there with the black. Just get that faded in there a little bit better. And I've only got the black on the very tip. Oh, you can't see, okay, good. <laughs> I've only got the black on that very tip. So when I'm rubbing like this, the side of my paintbrush doesn't have any paint. So it kind of helps make that fade softer. But see the difference there? See how that harsh line is gone? So just kind of follow along the edge of your rock. Make sure you don't have any of those really super harsh. See this one? I can kind of see it in there. See that one right there? So you just kind of, again, just work your way around a little bit at a time. And just work these little areas until you really like where you've landed in your design. But they're really cool and they look really impressive. People love these. They always go over well. You guys always are very happy when you do them. People get very excited because once you get started on them, you'll see this is something you can definitely do. And it looks so cool. And like I said earlier, there's so many ways you can use this style of rock. This broken rock look can be done so many different ways. And you can do them a lot of different sizes too. See if I can fit both of these guys in here. So I'm gonna call that good for now. So thank you everybody that watched today. Um, I hope you give this one a try. If you do, as always, please come back to the comments and share it below. Um, often, I, I say this all the time, but when people see um, other people attempting and accomplishing and being excited about being able to create the rocks, that gives other people confidence to give things a try, even if they see it and think, I can't do that. But as you can see, you guys got this. You can do this. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. Again, this is my last live of 2021. I will be back next year with lives. I do have plenty of content that I will have scheduled out to keep you guys inspired all the way through to the new year. And again, I just hope you all have a wonderful, safe holiday season. And I can't wait to see what 2022 brings for Rock Painting 101. Bye-bye, everybody.